Good evening from New York. With the final session of Congress before Election Day coming down to the wire now, Democrats are still torn between whether to force Republicans to vote now in defense of tax cuts for the rich or to duck a vote on extending the Bush tax cuts and let Republicans campaign against them for letting all taxes rise. If it seems like a no-brainer, our fifth story tonight should remove all doubt. A countdown special report, the reality behind the Republican argument made by House Republican leader John Boehner and others that tax cuts for the rich are simply tax cuts for small businesses whose owners report their business earnings on their individual personal income tax returns. House Democrats have pushed back that some of those supposedly small businesses are actually big businesses. And after the White House identified the right-wing billionaire Koch brothers as being among those ranks, Bill Kristol's right-wing magazine, The Weekly Standard, fired back, suggesting the White House had improperly looked at the Koch brothers' tax returns. In fact, their tax status was already public information. But as Countdown discovered, with the help of Pulitzer Prize-winning tax reporter David K. Johnston, who joins us presently, the Koch brothers are just the tip of a half trillion dollar iceberg. A variety of sources, including court documents, confirm that when Republicans talk about the small businesses they're trying to help with their tax cut, they're actually talking about some of the biggest companies in the world and some of the richest people in this country. Mr. Boehner admitting this summer that his tax cuts only benefit 3% of so-called small businesses. So how small can that top 3% be when it accounts for half of all small business income? Only 3% of those small business people, you keep talking about all the small business people that are going to get taxed, only 3% uh, would, would be affected by that. Or, or Do you quarrel with that figure? Is that a right figure or a wrong figure? Well, it may be 3%, but it's half of small business income. Uh, because uh, obviously the top 3% uh, have half of the, the gross income uh, for those companies that we would term small businesses. So how do they decide which companies they would term small businesses? H&R Block told Politico it has one and one half million small business clients, but extending the Bush tax cuts for the rich would benefit fewer than one half of 1% of them. According to the Joint Committee on Taxation, fewer than 750,000 people, one quarter of 1% of the country, would be affected by the top rate. So how small can this top 3% of small businesses be if they make half the small business money? And, and, and let's remember the context back then. Dave Camp knows he is the ranking Republican member on the House Ways and Means Committee. To him, the definition of small business is a footnote, literally. According to the Joint Committee on Taxation, 94% of all U.S. businesses in 2007 were S corporations, partnerships, or sole proprietorships pass through business types commonly used by small businesses. They call them pass-through companies because they file no taxes, passing through profits to the owners who report them on their individual tax returns instead. In short, they are considered small, not because they have a small payroll, but because they have a small number of owners. It's not the income that's small. It's not the number of employees that's small. It's just the total number of owners that's small. In the case of S-Corps, up to 100 owners. My colleague and I have been listening. When politicians talk about small businesses, they are including any company that pays taxes as a pass-through. House Democrats last week identified three limited partnerships that file as pass-throughs. A pipeline company called Enterprise, the Wall Street firm Kohlberg, Kravis & Roberts, and the accounting firm Price Waterhouse Coopers. The Koch brothers' own website lists partnership after partnership after partnership that make up a small business empire of 70,000 employees. According to the Washington Post, more than 1 million people who reported at least 200,000 in income in 2008 were partnerships and S-Corps. The richer you are, the more likely you are to call yourself a small business that way. 89% of Americans who make more than 10 million a year filed as a partnership or as an S-Corp. In 2008, more than half a million of these supposed small businesses had more than a million in assets. In 2000, Five, almost 20,000 of them had annual receipts of more than $50 million.
But if you want to know which companies these are, you are out of luck because individual tax filings are not public record. Still, some have revealed themselves. The S Corp Association lobbying group is chaired by an executive of the Hillman Company, a small business founded by a billionaire. The S Corp Group president is from Venn Strategies, a small business whose chief operating officer is a former special assistant to President Bush, whose president used to work for Senate Leader Reid. Directors of the S Corp Group come from Farrell Gas, which provides provides propane and propane accessories with a small business touch to one million customers. A small business. Coors Tech, North America's largest maker of technical ceramics. A small business founded by Adolf Coors. A small business. The Dead River Company, a small business with 1,200 employees, half a billion in annual revenue, and commercial real estate valued at $300 million. A small business. And a small business called McElhaney. The McElhaney family selling their Tabasco brand pepper sauce out of their kitchen to 160 countries. A small business. The Boston Globe revealed in 2007 that Fidelity Investments was becoming an S Corp, a move that saved this small business hundreds of millions of dollars. Similar to how a scrappy little newspaper called the Tribune, as in the Chicago Tribune, made an extra $1.9 billion by converting to S Corp status in 2008. As tax reporter David K. Johnston figured out, other companies get revealed as S-Corps when their filings become evidence in tax trials. That's how he identified one of the biggest small businesses in the world. Bechtel, a small business that builds airports, seaports, railroads, oil refineries, nuclear power plants. But back when it was just ye old Bechtel shoppy, they built the Hoover Dam. And today, 49,000 employees, $31 billion in revenue, the world's number one engineering and construction firm, a small business. Companies aside, who are the actual people who would benefit from the Republican tax cut for the richest small businesses? Him for one. Bloomberg News reports the president and other big authors and actors and celebrities, even hedge fund managers, file as S-Corps to save on taxes. Nor is Mr. Obama the only famous S-Corp owner. Recognize this guy? How about now? Thanks to court documents reviewed by Countdown, we know one of Texas's two richest men in the 1990s became an S-Corp back in 1991. Senator John McCain knows about S-Corps. Small businesses are the job generator of America. Mrs. John McCain filed as an S-Corp back in 2006, a small business owner who owns a massive beer distributorship and reported income of more than $6 million. And then there's small businessman Philip Anschutz, a small businessman who gave 30000 to the Senate Republican Campaign Committee last year and 15000 to the House, on top of his family's more than half a million to Republicans overall. Mr. Anschutz owns at least a part of more than 100 small businesses, small railroads, small oil companies, small sports stadiums, small arenas, a small national movie theater chain, a small half of small major league small soccer, the LA Kings, the LA Lakers. His small business entertainment company likes to clean out the old garage now and again to put on small shows by Bette Midler and share. Mr. Anschutz even owns small newspapers, including the Weekly Standard. Countdown has even identified one S Corp owner whose reclusive founder and chairman actually works out of these very NBC headquarters in New York. Hi. Technically, I'm a small business. As promised, let's bring in Pulitzer Prize winning tax reporter David K. Johnston, the author of Free Lunch, How the Wealthiest Americans Enrich Themselves at Government Expense and Stick You with the Bill. He's also a columnist for Tax Notes. David, thanks for your time again tonight. Thank you, Keith. First of all, we explain what's going on correctly, and, and can you flesh it out a little bit for us? 
uh, everything you said was correct, and it's actually much worse than this because, <laughs> oh, in addition to being passed throughs, <laughs> in addition to being passed throughs, uh, many of these enterprises benefit from all sorts of tax rules that allow them to take money now and then pay their taxes ten or twenty years in the future. Uh, that's an enormous benefit and a subsidy that ordinary working people who have their taxes taken out of their paycheck before they get it are in effect financing for these businesses. In addition, uh, about 900 of these small corporations, it looks like from the statistics, paid no income taxes even at the personal level of the owner. Um, when we think about small businesses colloquially, or as we would say, you know, using English, we think of uh, the mom and pop hardware store. We think of some online company that's run out of somebody's home, some employee somewhere who's trying to break out on his own and starts his own company selling the proverbial widget. Are any of those kinds of businesses in the range that Republicans are trying to protect in their supposed so-called benefits for so-called small businesses? Well, Keith, yes, there are some. I mean, you can have an author. Maybe my next book, I'll make enough money to uh, uh, be coming to your opprobrium for it. Yep. Uh, there are people who may own a chain of fast food stores or a particularly successful group of liquor stores, but they're a very small portion of this. There are about, as you mentioned, 15,000 S corps that have an average revenue of 150 million, and then there's another 18,000 partnerships that have average revenue of about 137 million. These uh, rich guys, though, paying the top rates, they'd have to pay a lot more in taxes if the Democrats don't renew the, uh, the top Bush tax cuts, right? Well, yes and no. <laughs> they do, after all, have uh, access to tax shelters. There are all sorts of fine rules. The reason the tax code is so thick has nothing to do with ordinary Americans. It has to do with favors bought with campaign donations. But yes, overall, they will pay higher taxes, which will go to provide better infrastructure so they can move their goods and services, educate people so they have people to buy their products, etc. Just putting aside for a second the Orwellian quality of this whole thing, that peace is war and, and big business is small business, in terms of hiring, regardless of the size of business, the GOP argument is that, that uh, raising taxes would curtail new jobs, would curtail hiring. Is that really the biggest factor, or don't businesses wind up deducting those costs um, in any case from their own taxes and their own expenses? Well, economic theory says there should be less job creation when we raise taxes. Well, Bill Clinton had Congress raise taxes in 1993, and eight years later, uh, uh, they were cut, and again, 10 years later, under President Bush. During Bush's eight years, three and a half million jobs were created. During Clinton's years, six times as many, 21 million jobs. In fact, during the Clinton years, more jobs were created in those eight years than in the 20 years of Ronald Reagan and both Bushes in the White House. So I think you have a tough time making that argument. Mm -hmm. What matters is what the taxes are spent on. Last question, is there law or code somewhere that defines what a small business is? Is that are there is there actually a just a a, a a a semantical violation here, or is there something more to it? No, this is essentially semantical. I mean, the SBA says if you have 500 or fewer employees, you're a small business. So certainly, by the definition of the Small Business Administration, many of the companies that we've talked about are not small businesses. And remember that small businesses also destroy many jobs. It's a relatively handful of little companies mm -hmm. that go on to become big companies. The, the gazelles they're known as, like say FedEx, that went from nowhere to being a big company very quickly. David K. Johnson, professor of Sy at Syracuse University. Great thanks for your time tonight and for your help on all of this. Glad to be here. Here's another shock. The billionaires who benefit from being small businesses trademark, use their money to fund Republican causes like tax cuts for small businesses, trademark, like them. It's not just those small businessmen, the Koch brothers. Another small businessman we mentioned is funding Pennsylvania Republicans, and one we haven't even told you about yet is funneling his tax savings to Karl Rove. We continue with this next. We've already shown you how the Koch brothers, by quasi-legal definition, own a peck of the small businesses Republicans uh, are trying to funnel tax cuts to. Next, how they and other small businessmen are in turn funneling campaign funds back to Republicans. 
Salon.com reported this week that 91% of the money for Karl Rove's new attack ad group comes from billionaires, three billionaires. And in our fourth story tonight, continuing our special report about how the term small business is an utter misnomer. The Chicago Tribune is technically a small business, as is the world's largest construction concern, Bechtel. Countdown has also learned that one of those Rove funding billionaires is, you guessed it, one of those small businesses whose taxes Republicans want to keep at Bush-era levels. He's Carl Lindner, who gave Rove $400,000 last month and who made his $1 billion, $700 million fortune through United Dairy Farmers, a small business with hundreds of stores and one of the top 15 ice cream brands in the country. Number 582 on Forbes's list of the world's billionaires, not that far below number 463, Henry Hillman, whose family bankrolls Pennsylvania Republicans with proceeds from his small investment business, which Forbes says makes him worth more than $2 billion. Let's turn now to MSNBC contributor Chris Hayes, the Washington editor of The Nation magazine. Chris, good evening. Good evening, Keith. How does the, the tax cut debate change now that we know what the Republicans mean by small business and to what degree the public has been had? Well, you hope the Democrats hammer on this. I mean, what's interesting is that even before this, right, even given the messaging that the Republicans were doing in this completely disingenuous small business uh, uh, chicanery as, uh, that you revealed, it was still, they were still on the wrong side of public opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact of the matter is people understand the number 250,000, right? They understand that we are talking about a group of people that's very, that's quite small and doing quite well. And when you climb up the income scale, I mean, you start getting up to incomes that are, you know, hedge for their hedge fund people who are making a billion dollars in income in a year. That's a flow. That's not, that's not wealth. That's annual income. People understand that. So this was, they were already, public opinion was already on the side of progressives on this. The real question is whether the Democrats are going to politically force the issue. I mean, I think something like this, you know, can get rid of whatever last vestiges of resistance there are, but it also exposes the political economy of, of, of the way this works and the way that upward redistribution has been sold, not just in this election cycle, but for the last 30 and 40 years. Incidentally, thank you, Chris, for providing those home movies of your yacht and your champagne. Uh, <laughs> Greg Sargent at, at uh, Plumline reported that, that the Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, is getting pressure still from the conservative Democrats, the conservative Democrats, who say that holding on to the, the middle class tax cuts, uh, holding the vote, is going to make them vulnerable on Election Day. And, and a lot of them are pushing to include these GOP tax cuts for the rich as well. The Democratic Congressman Brad Ellsworth of Indiana just said that today, said, get the issue off the table. It'll be much easier for us. How much crazier does that plan now look now that we know who they'd be helping out by using that plan? It is so politically, morally, logically bankrupt mm -hmm. that it, def it beggars belief. I mean, I, I wrote a feature for the Nation magazine last year, and I talked about the Blue Dogs, and the, and the big hustle the Blue Dogs has, right, have, w is that they say, our big thing, we, we're united around one thing, which is deficits. That, th that is the way that they trump themselves. That's their, their identity as a caucus. And what they are doing here now is to say, we want you to add $700 billion to the deficit over the next 10 years, and then much more in perpetuity, right? Because we're not talking about sunsetting any of this. This is out into the future as far as the eye can see. That's what they're taking a stand on. So it, it should never be reported. No one should ever say, never let it be said about the blue dogs that they care about the deficit. <laughs> they do not care about the deficit. What they care about is representing the interests of wealthy people that give them lots of money and or or, or some, you know, or themselves. I, I don't know. I'm not going to impute mm -hmm. to them what their motives are, but what, they, what is clear is they don't care about deficits. Um, we have a draft of this GOP plan that the party, the unsigned one that the party is officially revealing tomorrow. It calls for making the, ta the Bush tax cuts permanent for everybody, including, quote, the entrepreneurs and family owned <laughs> small businesses on which we depend to create jobs. How does that play now that we know that the, f the families owning these small businesses are worth billions? And not only are they worth building billions, but they are funding this entire enterprise. I mean, that's that is the thing that's so insidious about what we've seen. I mean, there is this is part of a larger phenomenon in American political economy. There's a book called Winner Take All Politics. It's by Jacob Hacker and Paul Pearson. Really recommend it to your viewers. And it talks about the way that we've we've seen this massive rise in inequality over the last 30 years on the front end, right, before taxes are paid. And then what our government has done is it's come in and it's exacerbated that inequality mm -hmm. by cutting taxes for the wealthy. And we've already seen it chipped away 
You know, even, even when we're talking about Democrats, we're not really talking about a tremendous amount of redistribution that, that is even on the table, right? This is this is really at the upper end, and there's already things like the carried carried interest loophole that allows mm -hmm. hedge fund people to pay 15%. That's not even the table. So we're barely even getting at this issue. And the sort of small business story has been one of the most powerful stories that, that conservatives and the wealthy have used to continue to enrich themselves despite the trends in the economy. This the, this nice little snake eats its own tail loop. The Republicans push or breaks for small businesses, small businesses that are so classified only because the number of their owners and then the giant small businesses feed the campaign contributions right. back to the Republicans. <laughs> exactly. Close the loop for us. I mean, we already knew about the Koch brothers, but now we're starting to see a picture emerge of one rich right-wing family after another funding the GOP so the GOP can run on tax cuts that will benefit one rich right-wing family after another. Is that about, about it? Yeah. I mean, I, we're seeing something. I mean, I, I don't want to use the word pooch or plutocratic pooch to describe yes. this because all this is within the, the, the confines of nonviolent democratic activism. But but what we are seeing is essentially a power play by by the, the, the nation's plutocrats. And the Citizens United decision has sort of opened the floodgates. I mean, there's reports, you know, there's a meeting on the Hill the other day where basically vulnerable Democrats said, we are getting killed right now by money that's, that's flowing in. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. MSNBC contributor Chris Hayes, thanks for helping us flesh this out tonight, Chris. Thank you, Keith.